Last week we talked about one pellet extruder constraint, which was the maximum rate of extrusion. This week we're going to talk about material flow. And not only is material flow important inside of the extruder via, you know, your temperature, your, your flow rate, all that stuff, but leading up to the barrel with the screw, your material is important, like the dimensions, for example. These on the left are going to flow well because they're spherical. These on the right, this flake is not going to flow well because it just doesn't flow because of the geometry. So we're going to talk more about this in this video. Alright, let's talk materials. I think this is a really important subject to talk about for pellet extruders. Um, you got to realize that Different materials have different properties, different flow rate, rates, different melt indexes, so on and so forth. So, and it also depends on what extruder you're using, too. Um, so, for example, we have the Mehor V4 here. Here are the specs. And it says here the, the range diameter, 1 to 4 millimeter diameter. Okay, that's really important to know. Don't try... To push something bigger than that, for example, here's some recycled polypropylene flake through this. It's not going to flow, okay? That's a really important thing to wrap your head around in regard to uh, material flowing through the hopper. Um, it's a, it can be a bottleneck. So if you try something like this or, say, cutting up, uh, you know, a recycled... PET bottle or something like that. It's not the material has to flow and stuff like this, since the geometry is irregular, is not going to flow. Same with this. This is recycled bottle caps, mostly uh, HDPE, because you get stuff like this, it's not going to flow well. So I recommend not trying it. In essence. Here's the easiest stuff to print. This is the LX175 PLA. These are round spheres, or very close to spheres. And the diameter, 3 millimeters roughly, fits right in the zone here. Now here we go. A little bit harder is, this is these are recycled polypropylene pellets. Diameter, 3 millimeters. But this material, you got to heat it up a little bit more, and um, getting it to flow can be a little bit more challenging. This stuff, all these plastics do pick up, like when you put them on a bed, if you're 3D printing with them, they will peel up from the bed when they sh shrink, especially at the corners of the bed. Um, this polypropylene does it much, much more than the PLA, but this PLA still does it a little bit. Okay, here is a polypropylene with carbon fiber fill. And this is a little bit harder to print than this because you have the carbon fiber fill mixed in. The carbon fiber filled polypropylene will be a little bit tougher to print because that carbon fiber will tend to wear out nozzles and clog. So here is a two millimeter stainless steel nozzle and uh, you can see the link in the description to buy these. This fits the Mehor here has a six millimeter thread and uh, this is pretty good for printing this. Next up we have some bottle caps which have been shredded in this shredder. Do I recommend this? No. Not, not in general because even though these are small Still, the geometry of each piece is irregular, and so it's, it's going to be a bottleneck. These aren't going to flow well heading into your extruder, in, into the barrel of the extruder, okay? So for even for a big machine like the Stallion here, it, it'll work a little bit, but you're not going to get super consistent extrusion. And I definitely wouldn't try it on something like this. Same goes with the flake here. This is recycled black polypropylene flake. And same goes with these shredded bottle caps here. You're just not going to get consistent flow for 3D printing. 
and even desktop injection molding. Now, there are some people who have gotten around the material geometry flow issue by having an extra stepper motor with essentially an auger that forces the material into the extruder barrel. And I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's, it's some pretty clever stuff. I'll, I'll Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison showing how materials flow. So this is shredded bottle caps. It's gone through a shredder. And notice when I turn it on its side like this, it just doesn't, I mean, it's completely on its side and it just like clumps and barely flows. Now these, on the other hand, these flow more like almost, you know, almost like a liquid, like a lower viscosity. And here are some straight up shredded bottle caps and they flow okay, but they're just too irregular. These, they're not going to make it through. And these are way too big for the Mayhor, and they're going to clog up something bigger like this. What some companies do is they will take the irregular plastic shapes, and then they'll pelletize it, which is nice. You can buy this and find places online to buy stuff like this. So this will flow into a pellet extruder or injection molding machine. Well, thank you for watching. Stay tuned next week and we're going to talk more about the stallion extruder.